Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Lee Murphy and I'm a community scientist with BioBus and I am here in my home laboratory in Brooklyn, New York. Hi, my name's Grayson. I'm calling in from Grand Ledge, Michigan. Hi, I'm Matilda. I'm in Brooklyn, New York as well. My name is Savion and I'm calling in from New York, New York. All right, so we got two, three New Yorks, and we have someone from Michigan. So this is an inter, this is like a cross nation crew. So today we are going to design an experiment and really look super closely at a very special organism, a living creature, and design an experiment around that creature. Uh, okay. All right. So the living creature that I found, I went outside, I did, and I collected some soil. And it's a very common creature for me to mm -hmm. find. Um, what are some common creatures that you can find around you, Grace? Worms, roly polies, stuff like that. Okay, so worms and roly polies. And what about you, Savia? Savion. I usually find like ants and cockroaches. Ants and cockroaches? Yes. Ants yeah. and cockroaches, they love to come into the home too. I get them all the time. I get ants and cockroaches too. I think there's like a, a couple in the basement right now too. Oh. Yeah, we don't have um, cockroaches because we don't live in the city. When we find the animal that we want to study, we have to figure out how to keep it alive, of course, right? And then the second thing, if we want to run experiments on it, we have to use those things that we learn about the animal, keeping it, or perhaps that we observe about it to design the experiment, right? So I currently have a tool behind me, which I think all of you have maybe heard of, but it's called a microscope. And I love to use microscopes as a scientist that studies insects because insects are very small. And in their little bodies, they contain a lot of really cool, intricate parts. Mm -hmm. So I have a request. Can we all take a look at a bug with me under a microscope and start to recognize parts of it that we maybe never noticed before? I've actually collected something that Grayson mentioned. Grayson said roly polies, worms. You also also said ants and cockroaches, um, but I actually was able to catch a roly poly in the park. So I'm gonna take this container full of, full of Full of creatures and I'm going to create a little container for it so that I can look at it under the microscope. So mm -hmm. this. Oh, can anybody see that? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. About the size, what size is it in real life? The roly poly? Mm-hmm. Can you hold it up with your fingers? Like have a how big? That small maybe. Even how big how big was it? Can you show me? Uh-huh, pretty tiny. So I'm gonna put this one under the microscope and we'll, we'll take a peek at it. Ooh, right. What, is it? what are we noticing? Is it is it in focus? Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't think it has eyes. You don't no, think I think it has eyes. Okay, what do you, who, who wants to give me uh, their reasons for it does have eyes and who wants to give me a reason for it doesn't have eyes? Hey, Grayson, you first? I don't think it has eyes because, like, there's, like, I, I think they use their antennas to see, like, to, like, get around and stuff. Well, just like butterflies, they use their feet to get around. Huh. Okay, so we have one guess that maybe this creature doesn't even really need eyes because other creatures that you know in nature, Grayson, don't even need eyes in order to navigate, right? Mm. Okay, well, Matilda, think, what do you think? I know a lot of bugs do have eyes, and it's like a kind of like uh, like flies, right? Like they have two eyes, and it like it can see basically all around them. It's like this. Because they're on really, the side. Yeah, like it's like really cool. Um, and I I think I understand that there's some bugs that uh don't have eyes, but I think I saw eyes on it, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of like ground bugs except for like worms ha um have eyes 
I feel like they have eyes. Okay, so we have two scientists that think yes eyes and one scientist that's imagining the antenna as the mechanism for navigating. Though that I, I think that maybe the antenna definitely has like a purpose. I think like if it has eyes, then the antenna definitely does have a purpose though. Mm -hmm. Maybe like if it was, for instance, like stepped on and like its eyes like got like broken or something, it could be yeah. bite back at the feet. Mm -mm. The purpose of killing or something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's like, you know how like some animals don't have like, do have eyes, but they don't have like very good eyes. I know there's some like eels oh, in the ocean yeah. that have like, do have eyes, but it's like they're basically blind. Exactly. It's like, um, it could be something like that. This, this, this animal is actually a part of a family called isopods. Can we say that? Oh, yeah. I, I like... When I was in science, like, uh, I think a couple uh, months ago when we were actually in school, um, we watched this big, um, like, I think one hour thing about, um, what, uh, what is it, like, uh, why am I forgetting this word, when, like, an animal changes over time, basically? Oh, yeah. Evolution. Yes. Okay. Evolution, like, a whole big video about um, how, like, how evolution, like, made all of the animals today. And I think I remember that uh, type of uh, animal, the, the I, like isosceles or something was in it or something. Oh yeah, isopods, isopods. This isopods, is a really good but... example because this is the only isopod that lives on land. Um, I have a question though. I know that bugs have like three different body parts. Like I forget what they're called, but like the head and then there's like two other ones that are like the chest and then like the legs basically does mm -hmm. does do roly polies have this okay head thorax and abdomen yes Grace. yeah are those is that what you were gonna say mm -hmm. all right so the, that is a really good question so i did say that we were gonna study insects today but what mm -hmm. i've actually shown you is not even an insect what i know Wait, that's not an insect? Not a true insect. Is it this, a bug? It's, so bug is a really, yes, safe, to be honest. It's like a general term for like creepy crawlies, but it's not super scientific work. Insect, to be an insect, you have to have exactly what Matilda said. You need a head, a thorax, that middle part, and an abdomen. But this creature is actually more closely related and is, in fact, a different organism. I bet we're going to be able to figure out what is it. Oh, like an arachnid? They're, yeah, the spiders are arachnids. To be a true insect, you have to have six legs. Exactly. So spiders, like you said, are not actually true insects, and this creature is also not a true insect. Should we count the number of legs? Sure. Sure. I saw 12. You see 12 legs? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. They're mo it's moving them, so it's kind of hard to count. Totally, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like an even number, because like, because yeah, like it needs to walk like we don't like, have three or one legs. Or yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So like it keeps a balance. It is. It seems to be keeping balance. Well, we are noticing that it has lots of little legs. We noticed that it has lots of different segments. We're sort of figuring out what kind of creature it is. But even if we don't know exactly what kind of creature it is, we can still design an experiment to test its behavior. So, Savia, let's think about, from what you just said, it's moving around a lot. What could be the reason for that, Savia? Since you made the observation, I'm gonna let you make the hypothesis. What, I think, I, oh, sorry. Um, I think it's moving around a lot because it, he probably doesn't want to be on like his um, back side. He wants to be like um, on his front side. Okay, so maybe because it's upside down. So what if I what if I flip it over? Should I do that experiment? Flip it over and see if it stops moving. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, hmm. It's moving. All right. So that was an excellent. That's good evidence for your hypothesis. Oh. But now it's moving again. Huh. I feel like he was moving so much 
because he's probably um that position is probably um uncomfortable um for him. Okay, so and maybe him. the container maybe is too small, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, huh. or like it's trying to escape. Maybe it might be trying to escape. So maybe what we've observed is its escape behavior. Um, but is there a way that we could potentially test whether it likes small spaces or big spaces? Uh, maybe. I'd like if you put it in a small space and then a big space and see which one I like. didn't try to get out of more. Let's say we want to design an experiment to test if it likes small chambers or large chambers. And Matilda said, what if we put it in a small chamber and we observe it? and then we put it in a large chamber and we observe it, right? That's one option. But we can't really tell what it prefers. We could see if it tries to escape or not, but what if we gave it both of those choices at the same time and, uh. and observed whether or not it chose one or the other, right? So what I'm talking about is actually a very famous experiment that scientists, especially scientists that study animal oh, behavior, do all the time. So it's actually called a choice chamber experiment. And it's when you give an animal two choices, but you eliminate all the factors, right? You make it very simple choices, small room, big room, and figure out whether or not you can test it over and over and over again and figure out what it prefers. So we looked at a roly poly with me because that's what I was able to catch. But all of you probably have different animals in your house or that you're able to find that you could run an experiment like this on, right? So my challenge for you right now is to think about and write down the type of animal that you could find in your environment, the materials that you will need to create your experiment, and then the conditions that you want to test. All right, so can we say those three things back all together? What are those three things that we need to, to do in the next part of this lesson? One, animals. Okay, two. Um, um, what materials you need. Exactly, and three? The, the experiment. Exactly, all right. So now I'm gonna pass it to the partner teacher and the partner teacher can facilitate figuring out those three things to design the experiment, all right?
So now that we've all come back and we have our ideas for the, the animal, the materials, and the experiment that we want to run, should we discuss what we, what we thought about? What animals you have in your environment and what kind of tests are you going to run on them? All right, so why don't Savion, you go first. I was going to have treats, and the, I was going to have treats, and my dad's going to have treats, and then whichever one, um, which, wh whichever one my dog gets the treats from the most, like whoever likes them the most. Okay, how many times are you going to do that trial? About five times. Five times. Is, is your dad going to say something different than you, or are you going to try and both be quiet? Because what if you're both calling the dog, right? Then will that yeah. test whether, like, w w will that change your experiment? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably just be silent. And okay. Time. All right. So that, that, is, that is a really important thing as a scientist. You have to imagine all of the factors in your experiment. Because if we're calling you, you like come to someone right away, and and I want and I, and I wanted to and I wanted to make it competitive. That makes a lot of sense. I love the way you've designed your experiment. What about Grayson? Um. Well, so I was gonna think about the roly poly. Okay. And like I have an experiment for what we do with the roly poly. <gasps> Ready for it. I'm so excited. Okay. So we could like bring the roly poly outside and like bring a bucket of water outside and like uh, then just put like sand everywhere um, and then see which one it goes to land or water. Oh, I love it. I love it. You them. said that before it was a sea creature, so it could. It's true. So, so it's descendant from creatures that came out of the sea. But it's been many, many, many years since those roly polies have been able to live in the ocean. But I love that experiment to see if they are affinity. And maybe it depends maybe on the day, right? If it's a really super, super hot day and the sand is super hot and the water's pretty cool, then that could be a factor. So you might also have to control the temperature of your environment, or at least note it as you do your experiment, okay? Maybe you could pick a certain day to do it. Exactly. A certain day, certain temperature. As a scientist, you get all of those kinds of choices. And Matilda, what is your experiment? Um, I was going to do the one with my dog about the yeah. ball or, like, treats. Okay. And also, if I catch a uh, cockroach, which I might, um, I'm probably going to do the, like, would it rather go into the light or the dark? Ah, I love that idea. And maybe you could complicate it a little bit. Either you could actually fully shade one, one part of it. But how are you going to construct the chamber for the cockroach? Um, hmm, I'll probably have like one with like in like a light room and then one that doesn't that has like a ceiling over and one that doesn't and then put it in the middle which one it wants to go to cool so i i, I if i was going to run that experiment i might like get like a s piece of like some recycling yeah. and then i would just get a piece of paper or something and i would cover one side right and maybe mm -hmm. make a little divider and then mm -hmm. then i have can you all read this a choice chamber choice experiment. Choice chamber experiment. Exactly. I could run a choice chamber experiment. Mm -hmm. So I love this I these ideas. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show you all a video. Is that okay? For the last mm -hmm. couple minutes. And this is a, a video that would allow you to participate in a larger group of students, actually over a hundred students, at least in New York City, who've been doing choice chamber experiments while they've been in their houses. So there's lots of different ways. You've shown us lots of different ways in imagination, movements uh, that, that, can, that, are, are, that you can take this experiment in those different directions, right? Because everybody has a different condition, right? Everybody's living in a different place. Everybody has different materials, but you're still able to do the scientific experiments if you build scientific experiments with what you have at hand, what, what, what you can find. All right, so I'm going to quickly show this video and I'm going to show you how to get there. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. 
I'm going to go to uh, an open window. Um, you all have access to computers, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, not all the time. That's a long, it's a lot to ask everyone to have computer access all the time. So, ready? Tell me if you can see my screen. Ready and now. Yeah. Great. All right. So what I'm going to do Google. Google. I'm going to go to any open browser window. I'm going to go to biobus.org backslash explore at home. And it's going to bring you to this page. So this is this week's challenge is about finding and observing your own DNA. And if you want to do this bugs and choice experiment, you go to week one and boom, there's my face. Ha. So <laughs> we are going to, I'm going to play this for you because this sort of gives a little overview of the next steps for all of you. All right. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a scientist at Biobus. Welcome to the first weekly Explore at Home challenge. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a device that will run experiments on bugs that we can find inside or outside of our home. So first step, let's find a bug. We need a spoon or something to touch the bugs with and a container, something to put the bugs into. We need to find an area with some sort of debris. That's scary. Kind of cute. Okay. Second step, build your experimental device. I looked in my recycling bin for potential materials. Also in my Tupperware drawer. I know many of you are currently stuck at home like me. You can also find bugs in your home. I used to be able to be in the subway, in my school, in the library, at a concert, movie theaters. Now, my choices are limited to my bed, the couch, the kitchen, the bathroom, the hallway. Even so, I am still making choices to be in different places depending on what I want at the moment. A bug's choices usually involve being under a log, in the grass, on a tree, inside a flower. I want to simplify the bug's choices and build an experimental device that scientists call a choice chamber. I want to give my bug only two environments to choose from so I can test if it likes this or that. And then I will remove it and do it over and over and over again and mark its choices every time. That way I can generate data and that I can share in the links below. So we made three different versions of the choice chamber. Version one with some cardboard and tape. You need scissors for this one. This one with some additional cardboard and tape. Also need scissors for this one. And also just cardboard, which you don't need scissors for and can use your hands to rip. For any of your choice chambers, you can put pretty much anything in either of those chambers. Now that you have the basic inspiration for the kinds of materials you'll need and the kinds of bugs you could find, try it yourself at home and post photos or videos or even your data in the survey in the link below. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. So what did you think about that? You think that was interesting. It was interesting? Mm-hmm. Savian, are you gonna try it? Oh hi! Are you are you gonna try it, Grayson? Are you gonna try it, Matilda? Yeah, I think so. I'll try it. Give it a try. Do you have any last questions for me? Um no, I don't think so. You don't think so? Yeah. Oh you not? yes. You Grayson. explained it really well. Thank yeah. You. Yes, Grayson, any questions? Um, I want to tell you something. Tell me. So, didn't you ask us the craziest thing we've seen? Oh, I did. I said, I was going to ask you the craziest thing we observed about the animal under the microscope today. And I was also going to well, say, like, a, you know, I was going to see if we could build an experiment around something that you were wondering. Some sort I of wanted, natural phenomenon. Hmm. I wanted to say the most craziest thing I've ever seen. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to let, I'm going to let the partner teacher, uh, 
facilitate any last minute questions that other students have. And then I'm going to let you tell me anything you want, because that's actually my favorite part of science is figuring out what certain experiments and what things we see conjure in our imaginations. So that's, that's what I love about science. And I loved doing science with all of you today. So take it away, partner teacher. And thank you very much. Should we say goodbye to everyone else who's going to watch that video? Bye. 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 Thanks for joining Bye. us.